Only what we do for Christ. Only what you do for Christ. All that you've done today. Only what you do for Christ will last. Even taking care of your children. Even taking care of yourself, your body. You pray over your food. You say, Lord, bless this food. Let it be nourishing for, for my body so I'll be strengthened to do the will of God. I want this food to make me strong physically, so physically so I can serve God. You know, everything that we do should be as unto the Lord, as unto God, as unto God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, hallelujah. We should pray. We should pray like, like there is no tomorrow. Amen. We should pray like there is no tomorrow. Amen. Because there very well could be no tomorrow. Amen. We should pray for our loved ones. We should pray for those who are who are who are lost. And call their names out until they're saved. Call their names out until their heart is open to God. That's what God is calling us to do. Pray and pray and pray. If you believe in prayer, we've got to pray for them until something happens. And if you believe God, if you believe God, you will pray knowing that praying is going to change that person. That praying is going to going to turn that person's life around. There's people we know right now, amen, who's lost. How many of us know somebody lost? Know somebody lost? Amen, praise God. How many, pray, how many, how many of us pray for them all through the day? All through the day. Lord, save them. Lord, save them. Lord, save them. Arrest their spirit of God. Send the Holy Spirit to arrest them, God, in the name of Jesus. Send the Holy Ghost, God, to, to soften their heart, to change their heart. We can't just, when you believe so, you can't just throw a little prayer up and thank God don't catch it. Amen. Just got to keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying until you get a call. The person say, hey, I, I just accepted God. Amen. I just received God. I believe God. I believe God. Amen. All of a sudden, something happened, and, and I believe God. I don't know what happened. I believe, I believe God now. My brother-in-law, he didn't believe. He didn't believe God. He, he he believed in science. He believed in other stuff, but he didn't believe God. And we would witness to him all the time. And and, and he would just man, he would just he would just make you feel bad. He had so much unbelief, so much unbelief. He just just talk about God. He would he was he was he was just negative, just against God. Didn't believe. Didn't believe nothing about it. Thought we were a bunch of but so I thought we were silly just believing God. And one day I got a call to go to the hospital to see him. He wouldn't die. Matter of fact, he lived probably 10 years after this time, maybe, maybe longer. But I went to the hospital to see him, and they said, go see him. They said, he's saying, I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. Because of what I heard come from his mouth, I didn't believe it. When I walked in the room, he looked at me, he said, Brian, I'm saved. And he began to tell me. He began to tell me all the things that God had revealed to him. Things that he, when, when he was young and working and, and doing this and doing that, he began, he said, I, I now know it was God here, that God was protecting me here, that God did this. And he began to testify and say all these things. And he, and he spoke for probably an hour and a half. He just sat there talking about the goodness of God. And I walked out of that room and I said, my God, the power of God to change someone's heart. His wife had been praying for him. His wife had been, been believing God for him and God changed his heart. And from the time God changed his heart until the time he died, he still believed in God. He never loved, he never not believed in God. He still called on the name of Jesus. And every time I see him, I said, man, it, that man, if you ever want to know, if I ever needed to know how real God was, I could see it in his life, how God changed his heart. How God turned, took his heart and, and just 
give him a new heart and renew the spirit. But, but it happened because somebody was praying and didn't give up praying. Amen. Didn't give in praying. Kept praying for him. Kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And one day God, the Holy Spirit said, now it's your turn. And the Holy Spirit was ushered into him and he was able to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible says no man can say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's lift our hands real quick. I got a short word for you on today. For the person that you just lift your hand up, you say, I know this person's, I know they lost. I know they lost. I know they don't know Jesus. And I know they don't want to know Jesus. They're lost. They're on their way to hell. If they were to die tonight, they would, they would, they would go to hell because they don't have Jesus Christ as a Savior. I gotta pray for them. Maybe I'm the only one that's lifting their name up. Maybe I'm the only one who's calling on their name. Maybe it's you. Maybe, maybe it's just you are the only one. It's not like somebody's gonna bag you up. Maybe you're the only one that's praying for that person. Which means you have to pray day and night. You can begin right now and, 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 and make a, a commitment to God and say, Lord, I'm going to pray for this person until they're saved or until I die. I am committing to pray for this person every day and throughout the day. And I'm going to pray for them until they are saved or until I close my eyes on this side. It begin, and then begin right now. Let this be your first prayer based after that commitment. Let this be your first prayer for them. And I tell you, believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Go ahead and pray for them now. And tell the Lord their name. Tell them, tell God who they are. And, and then let God begin to let God begin to begin to do what He do. Let him begin to send his, his angels and send his plan into that person's life. Because you open the door by praying for them. Hallelujah. Pray for their salvation. Pray for their salvation like you know what it will be like if they don't have eternal life. You don't want them to, you don't want them to go. You don't want your children to go. You don't, you don't want your loved ones to go. You want everybody. The devil wants them to be separated. But you want, you want everybody that can go with you to go with you. Everybody that can go with me to heaven, I want them to go. And we're not going to leave anybody behind. No family members, no brothers, no mothers, no sisters, no fathers, no friends. We're going to pray for them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Save them, Lord. Save them. Save them, God. Save them today, Lord. Save them, dear God. Save them from themselves, God. Turn their hearts to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Turn them to you, Lord. We don't take for granted that they know you, Lord. But God, we pray that you would turn their hearts to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Turn their families to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory, church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. We are we are uh, uh, peculiar people. Amen. 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 Which means, you know, you don't have to act like the world act. You don't have to be dignified and, and what the world, you know, fit into that Christian mold that the, that the world has chiseled out for us. Amen. But we, we too quiet. Amen. We too quiet as believers. Amen. We we, we, we too quiet, amen. God has been too too good uh, uh, to us, amen. 
He's been too good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I tell you, he's been too good. Amen. Even those of you that are burdened with, with burdens and problems and trouble and all these things, God has still been good to you. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. It, it, you don't need another message. Amen. Uh, another message ain't going ain't gonna to do you no good. Amen. Uh, another sermon is not going to do uh, most people any good. Amen. It's something different you got to do that, in, in reference to believing and receiving what God has said. Amen. Amen. You know, you can gain you can gain a whole lot of knowledge, but faith without works is dead. Amen. Faith without works is simply dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, man. Glory, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, God will fight for you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He'll fight for you. I guess I should have added on that. Will you fight for him? Amen. 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 Everybody wants God to fight for them. But a, but a whole lot of folks don't want to fight for him. Amen. Amen. You know, fighting for God is being excited about God. Being excited about him. Amen. Amen. Excited enough to tell somebody about him. Amen. Excited enough, amen, to, to, uh, to, to hold, you know, to obey him. Amen. To obey his word and to, and to live a holy and a righteous life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. I know. I know. We all we all not feel like I'm getting on you if I say this. Um, some of you have lost your praise. You've lost your hunger and your thirst for the Lord. And um, some of you never had it. So it's not that you lost it. You never embraced it. It's been there, but you never took advantage of it. Because it's a, it's, you know, it's it's just it's just there. You know, and a praise, a praise to God is something that swells up on the inside of you when you think about the goodness of God. It's something that that in, in in hard times, in tough times, in heavy times, is something that that um, bring you out. And bring you through. Amen. Yeah. And and um, that's your praise. Your praise is not always your praise is not always uh, expressed or revealed when things are going good, but mostly when things are not going good. Because it, it, it's when things are not going good that you need it the most. Amen. When things are going good, it's easy to smile. It's easy to, to be excited and to be full of joy when things are working out the way you expect them to work out. But when things are not going so good, it's easy to say thank you, Lord, when you, you got a lot of food, you got a lot of money, you got a good job, you know, you got a good mate and all those things. You just don't have no trouble. It's easy to say thank you, Lord, and keep going. But the, the, but the test comes the test comes when things are not going. Amen. When trouble seems to be following you and heartache and burdens always seem to be in your area, around you. That's when praise works. That's when praise uh, that's when praise is effective and when you can actually see 
praise work is when you down and when you low, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know where to go, and you all of a sudden begin to praise God. And let me tell you, when you when you when you, when, you, when it really worked, it really worked when you by yourself, and you don't need nobody to get, to be your cheerleader. You don't need no organ or piano or drums or, or those stuff, those things are good, but it really works when you by yourself and you begin to you begin to think about what you're going through. And then you begin to think about how God has brought you out before. And then it and it and it and it, and it leads into praise. It leads into you opening your mouth and, and thanking the Lord. Opening your mouth and praising God. And opening your mouth and, 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 and saying something. Sometimes I, 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 I say, I don't know why God be, be so good to me. I don't know why God do what he do um, 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 for me. I don't, know how he, I don't know how he always just open doors and, 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 and do this and do that. And it always brings me back to the place that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what, what's going on in my life that y'all don't know about, I praise God. I praise him. I, 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 I be so concerned sometimes when things are going real good in my life. And I get real lazy that I need to get myself up and go and go spend time with God. I say, wait a minute, things are just falling in place and they fall in place too good. And I don't find myself getting a little lazy. I said, I better get up. Because I need to thank God for all these things falling in place. And then I need to, it says, it says, I think I need to know that trouble is gonna come. Trouble gonna come. It said, let not your heart be. That means it's coming. If it wasn't coming, he never told us that. He never said, don't let it be trouble. Don't allow it to be trouble because if, it, if we wouldn't we'll never have it, he would never said that. But he said that because he knew that trouble is going to come. And so I've learned how to praise him even when things are good, crazy praise him. Amen. So that when I'm going through something, I, I, I know what's going to bring me out. I know what's going to bring me out. I know what's going to bring me through. Hallelujah. And I know it's the, I know it's praising God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It ain't hearing a, it ain't hearing another verse. It ain't hearing another scripture. It ain't hearing another Bible study. It ain't sitting here listening to no preacher. It's me opening my mouth and praising God. And some of y'all have come tonight and you didn't you didn't even come to praise him. You just came to hear what I was gonna say. And I'm telling you, what I'm gonna say ain't gonna change what's going on in your life. What I'm going to say is not going to impact your life. There ain't no special word. There ain't no special message. There ain't no special time. It's just when you get excited about God. When you get excited about what God has already done. I tell you, ooh. If God did what you wanted him to do right now, you wouldn't be no more excited than you are right now. If God, if God poured out blessings right now, you wouldn't praise him no more, no longer than you are right now. Because people that praise God, that understand how to praise God, they praise him when times are good. They praise him when times are bad. They praise him when they got a whole bunch of money. They praise him when they don't have no money. They praise them when they got a job. They praise them when they don't have a job. They praise them when they got a house. They praise them when they don't have a house. They praise them when they got shoes, when they don't have shoes. They praise him all the time. I tell you, they praise him all the time. Amen. They bless him all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, praise him. Tell the Lord praise
If you're lazy, you ought to tell the Lord to take that laziness away. If you're slow for you, you ought to say, Lord, take this slow for this away from me. Hallelujah. Say, so take it away, Lord. Take it away, Lord. Take it away, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being good and merciful and loving. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. You're so good. You're so merciful. You're so loving, God. God, we just thank you, Lord. God, I find the laziness of our spirits and of our praise, the slowfulness to God, the forgetfulness, God. We forget so quickly, Lord. We forget how good you've been. We forget things we prayed and asked you to do and you did it. And you still love us. You still adore us. You're just so good, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I told the Lord um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, that I needed um, him to create some opportunities for me. And um, a lot of church don't know, but um, I don't draw a regular salary from the church because the funds are not always there. They're not always given. And um, I, didn't, I didn't start preaching for funds. I did because God called me. So I said, Lord, I need income, additional income to put in my house. I need additional opportunities. And the Lord never went out and sought an opportunity. I just asked God for it. I was very specific in what I told God. I said, Lord, I want an opportunity. But Lord, you know it's got to do something with ministry. It's got to be something that I'll do with ministry. And so the Lord sent something. Yeah. Sent something that I can do and that I want to do. Yeah. And, um, and I've been doing it. Yeah. And, um, and then while I was doing that, uh, the Lord, see, he, see, the verse that says he'll do it exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think is a true verse. Amen. So I... Um, I, I, when he did what he did, I didn't forget to thank him. I didn't forget to tell the Lord thank you for what you for what I asked you to do. I didn't forget that I asked him for an opportunity and just went about like nothing happened. I said, Lord, is this this must be the opportunity I prayed about, and I began to thank him for that. And on top of that, I got a call from uh, Southern University wanted me to develop a program for them that I used to develop when I was a training officer. And I said to them, I said, I said, now I'm not, I'm not able to do it. I'm not, I'm, I can't be the director of this program because I, I no longer have my certification. And they said, we don't, we don't need you to do that. We just want to hire you as a consultant to get us through the accreditation program process and, um, and and I didn't call them they called me and I went to visit them about maybe a month ago three weeks ago and um, and they hired me to do, to do something I can do with my eyes closed 
to do something that I've always done, I know how to do, and I know, know the resources to connect with uh, what they're doing. So I'm developing a, a, a program, a, a, a program at, at Southern University. But I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is, I'm saying this to you, is that when you believe God yeah. and you are thankful, yeah. when you are thankful to God, yeah. when you praise Him, yeah. when you're struggling, when you praise Him when things are good, when you remember His hand, and you don't just look at His hand. I got another offer that was in between the, 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 the Southern offer and, and, and the one I'm doing, I got another offer to, to uh, do something, but it, I knew it wasn't God. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was doing something in, in schools that I had done before, and I knew that wasn't God, you know, calling me to it, and I still to this day hadn't called the man back and told him I wasn't gonna do it. I just told him I'd think about it. What I'm saying, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask to say. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to worry about finding it. He'll find you. He will find. Now, how they got my number, I don't know. But when I went, when I went and met with them at Southern, uh, uh, they just they just opened opened the door, you know, for me to do what I need to do. You know what I'm saying, and and um, and um, so I'm just saying it's just it's just um, and I was able to hire a, um, a, a administrative assistant that's doing all my my my, my work my um, my stuff for me. We just provide her with what what we need. So I'm saying you don't understand the power of praise. And you don't understand the expectation from God. When I say God will fight for you, He will fight. He will fight for you. Amen. If you let Him, He'll fight for you. If you let God, He'll fight your battles. He'll fight the things you're worried about right now. He'll fight the things that keep you up at night. If you let God, He'll fight your battles. He'll fight no matter who come against you, no matter what come against you, God will fight for you. I said God will fight for you, amen. That by itself is enough to shout off of. God will fight for you. Hallelujah. God will fight for you. He'll fight for you. Amen. You don't, you don't know it unless he unless he's fought for you before. He'll fight for you. Hallelujah. He'll fight for you. God will fight for you. He'll fight for you. Hallelujah. My God. I'm, I'm not just talking about him saying, you wait, let me fight. Like the big brother would step in on a fight. He fighting for you. But when you're in captivity, God will fight for you to get you out of that. You know what I'm saying? He'll come to get you out. He'll fight for you. And he'll stand before your enemy and fight for you. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for fighting for me, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 In Exodus 3 and 10, it says, come now therefore and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You know, God, uh, uh, Moses, we know Moses, the story of Moses, and he saw this burning bush and God told Moses, said, come, in, come, I'm, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh so that you can lead my people, my children out. He said, I'm going to send you there so that you can lead them out. That was God fighting for his children. Yeah. He's going to send somebody, Moses, he was sending them there to lead um, the children of Israel out, to get them away from, from Pharaoh. Pharaoh had the people there. They were slaves, and they were doing, uh, they were building stuff for them. They were slaves, but they were God's people. They were God's children. 
And God, it was at God's time that God said, I've heard their cry. I've heard them crying. Just like he heard you cry right earlier for your loved one. He said, I've heard your cry. He's a God that hears our cry. Amen. 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 Don't you think he don't hear our cry? If he heard their cry, he heard your cry. Amen. And, but God didn't say he cried one time. He said, I've been hearing the cry of my people. That the, that the Egyptians have them in bondage. He said, I've heard the cry. He said, now Moses, you go tell Pharaoh to let him go. Go tell Pharaoh to let him go. God's heard your cry. But if you don't cry, he can't hear you. If you don't cry to God, he can't hear you. Amen. 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 But if you cry, he'll hear you. Amen. In Ephesians, in, I mean, I'm sorry, Exodus 5 and 2. It says, and Pharaoh said, who is this Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Sight, he showed, let her go, didn't he? Amen. So Pharaoh, so, so here it is, here it is, um, uh, Abraham, Moses, he goes to, um, to Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. And God had given them two signs. Because Moses said initially, he said, he said, God, he said, the people are not going to believe me. He said, see, he said, take that staff that you got in your hand. He said, throw that staff down. He threw it down and it became a serpent, right? It became a serpent. And he says, okay, pick that serpent up by the tail. Pick it up by the tail. And he picked it up by, by the tail and became a staff again. Y'all remember that? And so let me, let me tell you why that was important. That was important because of this. Because now he goes into Egypt. And, 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 and he's before Pharaoh. And, 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 uh, and Pharaoh said, I'm not, I'm not going to let him go. And, and who's your God in this staff? So he throws the staff down. And, and, and when Moses throws the staff down, the staff becomes a serpent. A big serpent. And so here it is, these, these, uh, these uh, magicians that, that, that uh, Pharaoh got, he said, ah, that ain't nothing. And they do, do, do the same thing. They throw their sticks down, and their sticks became serpents. But look what God staff did. He eats up all the serpents. He eats up all the other serpents. All the serpents of the devil, he ate them up. He swallowed them. He ate them up. And, he, and if you read that chapter good, you'll see it wasn't just one. He ate, he just ate all of them up. And then, the, then he reached down, grabbed him by the tail, and he turned to a staff again. Where is the devil's threat now? Where was the devil's threat now? The same thing he did then, he's doing it right. God, before anybody, he'll eat up whatever the devil got in front of you. Whatever the devil has in front of you, the Lord will deal with it because the Lord, will fight. say the Lord will fight for me. Say it like you mean, the Lord will fight for me. Amen, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for me. So, okay, so over in Exodus 8 and 25, it says the Pharaoh called for Moses and Abraham and said, go ye, uh, go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. So he said, go and sacrifice to your God in the land. And just as Pharaoh did not want Israel to leave Egypt, neither does Satan want people to leave uh, the, the world. Satan don't want you to leave. Pharaoh did not want the children of Israel to leave. And let me tell you something. The devil don't want you to praise God. He don't want you to leave the mindset you have. He don't want you to leave the, the life you're living. He don't want you to leave anything that represents the adversary. Satan does not want you to leave. And that's why it's such a stronghold for you to clap your hands. A stronghold for you to say amen. Because Pharaoh didn't want, he didn't want the children of Israel to go. And Pharaoh said, I will, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far. He said, you can go, but don't go far. You go and praise him, but don't go far. That's what the devil's saying. The devil's saying, you can, you can go to church, but don't clap your hands, that's going too far. Don't say amen, that's going too far. Don't listen to what Brian's saying. That's going too far. Don't you get up and, and lift your hands. You're going too far. Yeah. No. And guess that, what? We fall for it. No matter how good God has been to you, you can't even lift your hands sometimes and praise him. No matter how merciful God has been, how God has brought you out, and how you thank him, you can't even lift your hands because Satan said, don't go that far. Don't go that far. You think it's your personality, baby, it's the devil. You think, oh, this is a quiet person. You ain't no quiet person. That's the devil. That's the devil. The devil saying to you, he said what? 
Don't go too far. Go back to that verse for me. He said, don't go too far. You can go and worship. Look what he said. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far. You can go, you can go and praise him. You can go to church. You can go sing in the choir. You can go do this, but don't live right. You can, you can do this, but don't go too far. Don't you go too, too far in that word. Don't you go too far in obeying him. Don't you go too far. And we hearing him. You think it's your conscience. You think it's this is just how I am. No, it's the devil. The devil saying, don't go too far. That's why we so contained. We so uh, politi politically correct. Amen. Amen. We, we are peculiar people. We are, we are not of this land. We are, we, are, we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are born again. Amen. Hallelujah. We Holy Ghost filled. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are sanctified. We are set apart. Glory. Hallelujah. You ain't supposed to act like the person that's on your job that don't know Jesus. You're not supposed to be like the person who's lost. Amen. We're not supposed to be like them. We are different. Glory. Hallelujah. We lie. We crazy. Hallelujah. We'll pray for you in the line, in the supermarket. Amen. In the parking lot. We'll hug you. Amen. Because we are not like, I'm not like you. I'm like my daddy. I'm like my father. Amen. But that's what the devil's saying. Don't go. Don't go too far. Don't, go. Don't you go too far in that church. Don't you get to where you, you commit yourself to that church. Don't you commit, don't you commit to, don't you, don't you commit to going to prayer. Don't go too far. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying in, in your spirit. Don't you give. You're going too far now. You give me a tithe. You're going too far now. Huh? You're going to serve. You're going too far. That's what the devil's saying, church. That's what he's saying. Pharaoh knew he had something. He had something good with that. With the, with the people. He had free labor. They were slaves. And the devil have, have a lot of us, have people, have, have, have people, the children of God in bondage, he got free labor. Come on. He got free labor. Yeah. Go cuss her out. You go right over there and cuss her out. He, 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 he got free labor. Come on. Yeah. Go look crazy. He got cuss. He's a little crazy at it. Free, that's free labor. That's you think that's you, that's the devil. The devil didn't want the people to go because. He had free labor. He had the people making straws and bricks out of mud. Had them, had them using mud and straw making bricks. You understand? That was free labor. How did Egypt get built? They got built, they got built with them slaves. They built, they built that place. What did Pharaoh pay them? Nothing. Huh? Even when they started having too many children, they, 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 they were killing some of them because they didn't want them to overpopulate and then to take them over. Tell you that the, the, the devil, that's just like the devil. The devil said, I'm gonna do everything to keep you down. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, 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 what's that, Exodus 20, uh, 8 and 28. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God. Okay, go to, uh, go to, go to, go to, go to uh, uh, let's see, um, Exodus 10 and 11. Now so, uh, now go ye that that li, li, listen. Now go ye that now now go ye that are men and serve the Lord for for that ye did desire and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Listen, when when Pharaoh initially Pharaoh initially said to Moses, you can take the men, but leave the women and children. You can take the men, but leave the women and the children. The women and children have to stay here. They can't go. Pharaoh was doing everything he could. One, he first he said you can't go far. Then he said you take the men, but you can't take the, you can't take the women and the children. And that's what the devil is saying to us now. 
He's saying the men. He's saying the, he's saying the men. He's saying the single parents. He's saying, you can go to church, but don't take the children. You can go to the Lord. You can go serve the Lord. I'll let you go, but don't let your children stay back here. Don't let your children have a relationship with God. You can have one, but don't let anybody else have one. I'm going to let you go. See, see, the devil never going to just agree to let everybody go. He's going to keep, he's never going to agree to let you uh, just all of a sudden uh, 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 get excited about God. It's going to be in stages. Because he's he, he going to make you think people looking at you. I ain't going to lift my hands, people looking at me. It, 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 I feel like dancing, but I don't want to dance because somebody's looking at me and maybe I don't have a right dance. You know, I'm, I'm not going to shout because people are going to laugh at me. And so the devil keep you from going that far. And then he say, you know, don't, you know, people say, where's your, your child? Oh, she didn't want to come. Oh, he didn't want to come. Oh, they didn't want to come. Because the devil's saying, okay, you can go, but don't carry nobody else. And so what we do is, is uh, you, you, you're going to enter heaven, but your child ain't going to make it. You, you got a relationship with God, but now you died and your children never knew Christ, the way you know Christ. Because the devil said, as Pharaoh said, you can go take the men, but leave the children and the, leave the women and the children back. That's the devil. That's what the devil doing. That's why everybody at your house ought to be coming to church. All your children, pack them up. Back them up, we're going. Amen. Amen. My mama used to take us, drag us to church. If you were sick, you were going to church. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. If you sick, she's like, church is where you need to be then. So you couldn't pull the sick thing. You was going to church no matter what. I mean, I got my, my hair French braid uh, on uh, in the summer. And uh, and uh, that midweek service, I had, I had French braid like that Monday. And that Wednesday, we was getting ready to go to church. And she said, when are you going to take your hat out? You ain't going to church looking like that. I said, well, I mean, this lady don't spend all this time braiding my hair. I was a little boy. Of course, I didn't say this to her. I said this over and over. So I said, mommy, this woman spent all this time braiding my hair. And uh, she said, well, you can take it down in the car when you went to church. She said, but by the time we get to church, you better have it all down. Because <laughs> when you got it done, you was going to church, and you ain't going to church wearing them braids. Back then, we couldn't do it. We didn't do that. You know? yeah. today, today, we understand, you know, come like you are. You know, God, God has saved you with the braids in your head. Right. Amen. 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 Ain't got no problem with that. But, um, but my mama had a big problem with it. <laughs> and, uh, and I had the braids down when I got, when I got, to, uh, when I got to church. Amen. Why? Because we was, there wasn't no such thing Well, you stay because you got your hair braids. No, you're taking the braids down. You're going to church. Amen. Amen. Say God will fight for me. He sure will. Amen. Exodus 10, 24. Amen. And Pharaoh called out to Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds uh, uh, be stayed. Now, let me see here. Go, go to... Um, Let's see. Go to, go to uh, Exodus 14. Uh, uh, let me see. 10, that's 10.24. Yeah, okay. okay. Before, even, before, even before this, go to Exodus 14, 6 and 8 for me. I want to I I show you something here. I tell you that, that Pharaoh represented the devil because God had hardened his heart. And when, and when your heart is hardened, you are, you are against God. You are rebelling against God. Child of God, don't let your heart be hard. Look at your neighbor. Look at the person next to you. He said, don't let your heart be, get, get hard towards God. Exodus 14, 6 and 8. Don't let it get, don't let it get hard. Don't let it get against God, y'all. I'm telling you, don't let it get against God. If, if, if you stay away from God long enough, your heart, your heart will become hardened towards him. It'll become hardened towards him. Amen. Uh, that wasn't the verse I wanted. Uh, that, was, I want, that was the one I gave you, but that's not the one I wanted. I can't remember which verse that was. That spoke about the, the uh, it's, it's an Exodus. It spoke about him letting the children and the wives go. Somebody can find that for me. We'll put it up there. Amen. So or Exodus ten, Exodus ten twenty four. Go ye only let your flocks and your herds uh, be stayed. So 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 listen. So 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 Pharaoh said, you can go now, Moses. You can go. The children and the and the and the and the, and the moms can go, but leave your resources behind. So you can go, but you ain't taking them cattle out of here. You ain't taking them animals with you. And Moses said, how are we going to eat? 
How are we going to do this? See, see, the devil was doing everything he could, the adversary was doing everything he could to, to hurt you. He'll tell you, don't, he'll tell you, go to church, but don't take your money. Go to church, but don't pay your tithes. Go to church, but don't, don't, don't take no provisions there. He, his whole objective is to cause you to be disobedient. But, but he wants to rob you of everything. He, he didn't want them to take, okay, 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 first, don't, first, you can go for a little while, but don't go far. Then he said, you can go and you can take the men with you. Then he said, you can go and take the, the women, the men, the women, and the children. Then he said, you can go and take the flock. But initially, he wanted to hold everybody back. Go, you can only be gone for three days. Three days initially is what he said. Then he said, okay, okay, you can go, you can take the men, but leave the women and the children. Then he said, okay, you can, you can go, but, uh, but you can take the women and children and the men, but leave your flock. Leave your possession. Leave, leave your cattle. Because he knew they couldn't make it without them animals. They needed milk for babies. They needed, they needed, they needed those animals with them to, to, to start their life. You understand? And so he said, so Pharaoh called up Moses and said, go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. He said, let the little ones go with you. Amen. That's what God said to you right now. Let the little ones go with you. But, but you know what God did? You know, Pharaoh... God went in and, and, and said, I'm going to I'm I'm, I'm I'm take the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Take the firstborn. Told the people that put blood over your doorposts. Put it over, over your doorposts. And you go in and everybody take, take one lamb on the inside of their house. Take only a lamb for each, for each family. Say each family. Each family. each family. each family have a lamb. Each family have a lamb. So don't take one, don't take two, take one lamb and everybody eat that lamb and if you go in if you put the blood of your doorpost, the death angel will pass by. So those that had a, had a, had a firstborn, the, 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 angel passed, the death angel passed by. The people that were o, o, obedient. You understand? Because God was, was, was providing for them and they were, they, were o, they were obedient. They were obedient. And then Pharaoh told them to go ahead and go. And he, he left. He left. He left and God, God let all the children, almost three million of them, left on their way uh, to the promised land. On their way out of Egypt. And they borrowed, the Bible, the Bible said borrow, but they didn't borrow nothing. They took gold and silver from the Egyptians. You know why you know Pharaoh said they borrowed? Because he was planning to go get it back. He was planning to, he, his God had hardened his heart and he was going to get it back. But that's, that, that's, that's, that was not what God was going to allow him to do. You know why? Because God was fighting for his children. He'd fight for you. He'll let you leave with everything and with everybody that's supposed to be with you. And then he'll let you take what you need to make it. How do folk were able to build a golden cat? They slaves. They slaves. They were free labor. But they but everything that was owed to them, they got it on the way out. Amen. They were just foolish. They, they never had nothing. So they took that stuff and put it together and built them a golden calf. How did slaves build a golden calf? They build a golden calf from a God that blesses them. Amen. They took what they got and blessed them with. And they, they used it to do something they shouldn't have done. But what we try to see is the blessing in it. God will walk you out. He'll walk you out of your trouble. He'll walk you out of, 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 of your, in, your, your Egypt. And he'll take you. And you got to say, I'm not leaving. As Moses said, I'm not leaving without my children. I'm not leaving without my family. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Some of you got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. But I'm not going without my brothers and sisters. And your, your brothers and sisters may be in jail. They may live in another city or state. But that's okay. You ought to say, I'm not leaving without it. And I'm going to stay right here until I'm going to stay here praying until they get saved. Amen. 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 That's what we got to do. Amen. So, so, you know, Pharaoh, I'll uh, go to 14, back to 14, so 14, 6 and 8, 6 to 8. It says, and, 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 um, and he, he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 uh, chosen chariots and all the, 
uh, chariots of Egypt and the captives over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued. Let me tell you something. The devil will pursue you when you leave. When you, when you are walking out of your trouble, when you are walking away from the devil, don't think the devil just going to let you walk away. He is going to pursue. He's going to pursue you. Christians think because they come to the Lord that the pursuit is over. No, the devil is going to pursue. He's going to pursue. God had hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was pursued. The children of Israel. Look at all of them. He took all these chariots and these horses and stuff. And he pursued after the children of Israel. He was pursuing after the children of Israel, and God was fighting for them. And it says, and the children of Israel went out uh, with a hot, uh, within the high lane. Amen. So they go out, they got all this stuff. God put a fire between them, and Pharaoh couldn't even get to them. Put a cloud over them. Amen. They came up to the Red Sea. Moses parted the Red Sea. All the people go across. Then God released Pharaoh to come across and drown all of them. Drown them all. Amen. You know why he did that? Somebody tell me why he did it. He was fighting for his children. He said, I'm going to make sure they don't come after you again. I'm going to make sure that this is behind you. Yeah. Moses, the hell, Moses, Moses stood up there and, and, and he couldn't even, he couldn't even, he was so tired, he couldn't even hold his arms up. They came and held Moses' arms up. As long as he held his arms up, the people would keep coming. And the people came on, three million people. That fire that God had between the children of Israel and Pharaoh stayed there. And as soon as the, the, as soon as the person crossed over, God let that fire go. And Pharaoh said, let's get them, boys. And they went on out there in that Red Sea. Foolish. And God drowned every one of them. They still find the chariot wheels in the Red Sea. They still find that stuff in the Red Sea. To this day, they find it. They still find that stuff in the Red Sea. You know what that is? Proof. Proof. Some crazy people say, well, you know, the water wasn't that high uh, back in them days. Um, so, you know, and they said, wow. They said, wow. They said, that water wouldn't be like two or three feet high. That's what some of them say. We give God even more credit if he, if he can drown somebody in two or three feet of water. Amen. So, well, our God is really good. If, he, if the water wasn't that high, they still finding wheels out there in three feet of water. <laughs> no, the water was, the water was, the, the water, when, God, when Moses spread that water, the folks went over on, they, they feet didn't get muddy. Amen. They went over on dry land. The first aquarium wasn't in, in Philadelphia or, or New Orleans or San Antonio. The first aquarium was at the Red Sea. Amen. Can't you see no people walking by looking at all them whales and fish? Amen. I'm telling you, them fish could swim all the way up to that water. They could see all that stuff in that sea. It, listen, do a sea have a fish in it? Sharks and things like that? Yes! So why wouldn't they be able to see them while they walking through the sea? They held that, that what got them made, made them walls of water. He spread it, it was walls of water. And the fish were on the other side. I bet you know people can see those fish. Amen. Made it like glass going all the way across. And folks going through a quarter. Red Sea Aquarium. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let me make sure I gave him the last one. Okay, so he, he, he's going he's to pursue. Amen. Let me give you this last one. Uh, okay, go to, go to uh, 1427. 1427. Praise God. 1427. And Moses stretched forth his hands over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. He sure did, didn't he? Praise God. And he feeds you. Now let me tell you something. This is why it's important. You don't forget. It's important. You don't forget. Now, now, now listen. God done brought them, brought them out. They could, Moses could have just left with the men, but he didn't. He, he went back to Pharaoh and said, no, I can't just leave with them. We're taking everybody. 
Then he got the women and children. And he could have just left with the women and children. The men said, well, this is the best we can do. You know, this is the best we can do. We're just going to trust God for food. He said, no, we need our cat. He went back and got the cat. So they, they all, they go all the way across. Did God answer his prayer? Did God answer his prayer? Huh? I'm asking you a question. Did he answer his prayer? He did this. Protected them going over. They got over. He drowned their enemy. He drowned, he drowned the people that was against them, right? Did he do all that? Did he do all that? Amen. Now, what, what do you do when God do all that for you? Huh? And, and, and that what you do? Okay. Hey, go, go to Exodus 15, 1, 2, and 3, 4. That's what you do, right? So this ain't something we rewrite. This is something that we understand that this is what happens when God answers your prayer. It says, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and the rider has he drowned, has he thrown into the sea. Amen. They sang that. Them folks over there singing because God don't answer their prayer. God don't bless. They didn't do like most of us do, just sit there and like, I'm waiting on this on that. God brought them out, delivered them, and they did what? They begin to sing. Go to go to the feed you too. Look what they said. They, 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 they was listen, they were writing a song for God. Actually, I'm sorry, Exodus 15 and 2 and 3. They was writing a song uh, for the Lord. I, I didn't get a penny this early. So the Lord is my strength. See, see, they sing it. They sing it, man. They sing it. Moses starts singing, and all the children of Israel start singing. Ain't nobody that said, okay, guys, listen, God has done this wonderful thing uh, with, for us. We're going to form a choir. No, they begin to sing yeah. because of what God had done. They said, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father God, and I will exalt him. They sing in the God because of what he just did. The very next verse, chapter, after he delivers them, after God drowned, they folk get to singing, praising God, glorifying God. The Lord is a man of war. Look what they say. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And put 14, 14 in there for me. Exodus 14, 14. Exodus 14, 14. Exodus 4. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Thank you, Sister 4. The Lord going to do what? Amen. He's going to fight for you, and you shall hold your God. Y'all, what more does God need to do for you? If you have to write a little list and say, God, if you just do this, I, no, you won't. If, 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 you, if you, you, right now, if this is your first time in church, you heard enough. You heard enough. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. He fights for you. How does it work? It worked by you believing him. It worked by you taking his word like Moses did and not being afraid of the adversary. And whatever God has spoken to Moses, and Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses didn't go back to God and say, well, God ain't gonna do it. No, Moses kept saying, Moses kept on going until everything that God had said was done. And when Moses would say something, Pharaoh would hold the people, then God would send a plague. And God kept sending it, God kept doing, kept doing something until eventually Pharaoh got the message. And he let the people go. And God just wanted to get rid of Pharaoh, so he hardened his heart. And when he hardened his heart, he said, we're going to go after them. And, and, God, and God said, yeah, yeah, that's what I want y'all to do, because I'm going to drown y'all when y'all get in that sea. Y'all get right up in there. Y'all get right up in the middle of it. Because we're going to drown every one of them. So take, take your best men with you. And that's what he did. He hardened his heart, and them folks ran. Now, now who's going to run through? They're going to go through that? They, listen. If you if, if you if you got to the water, if I got to if I was fire, I got to the fire and saw the fire, I'd be like, hey guys, we finna go back to the house. 
we we finna head back to the house. He had me on the frogs and the locusts. Hey Amen. The, the, the locusts and stuff falling from me. I'm hey, I'm done. I'm like I'm like I'm like y'all need some of these carriers to go. Y'all get on out of here. Because I'm done. Your God can do that. Your God is that powerful. Y'all go ahead and go. Matter of fact, I don't even want y'all here. Get out of here. But that's not what happened. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Somebody needs to know the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. Will you fight for him? Will you fight for God today? Will you fight to live a holy life? You live a holy life. So I'm going to live a holy life for you. I'm going to live righteous, God. The reason I'm going to do it, God, because you're good to me. God is good. Isn't he good? Amen. Isn't he good, man? I told my wife this morning, I said, you know, baby, so, you know, some people got children in the hospital. Some people got loved ones in, 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 the, in, in the hospital sick. And they've been in a long time. Children with cancer, mm -hmm. little babies with cancer. Mm -hmm. All their life, they're fighting cancer. Mm -hmm. Moms can't work because they got to be up to the hospital. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us. We got healthy babies. There's some saved people, people filled with the Holy Spirit, who got sick children. There's mm -hmm. some preachers who got, who got uh, wives that are sick and diseased. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing but the grace of God. And it's not because God has blessed me and not blessed them. God has blessed all of us. Yeah. We are all blessed. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow we could be in the same situation as some of the people that's in that situation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so listen. So, so we have so much to be thankful for. Because God has fought for us. He's fought for your children. He's fought for you. Yes. And now it's time for us to say, God has fought for me and he's fighting for me. Amen. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and believe God yes. for my relatives to be saved, yes. the people I know on my job who are lost. I'm going I'm to pray for them, Lord. Yes. I'm going to pray for them, Lord. I'm going to pray for them. Because I'm, I'm, they're my brothers and they're my sisters. And I'm not going to leave them behind. Yes, I'm not leaving them behind. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to leave them behind. I'm not going to leave my, my family. I'm not going to leave my biological children. I'm not going to leave people I love who in my life. I'm not going to leave them behind. I pray for this church because I don't want to leave this church behind. I don't want to leave anybody in this church behind. I pray for the people in this church every day. Bless the men in our church, God. Bless the women. Bless the mothers. Bless the fathers. Bless the children, dear God. Bless our leaders, oh God. God, let our hearts be open to you, Lord. God, let us surrender our lives to you, God. Let us hunger and thirst for you, Lord. Every one of us, God. Let no one be left behind, God. If God should come right now, it should be just an empty church. Nobody should be around looking and saying, where everybody go? Just an empty church. Thank you, Lord. That's what we want. Isn't it what we want? Amen. Amen. That's what you should want at your home, at your house. Nobody's going to be left behind because we're going to pray until the hand of God moves. Father, we thank you. Thank you for fighting for us, God. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us, oh God. Thank you, dear God, for being our present help in times of trouble, Lord. Thank you for making ways out of no way, opening doors that no man can close. God, let our hearts be open to you. God, let our wills be surrendered to you, dear God. Father, let us be willing to sacrifice our time to praise you and to worship you, Lord, and to give you thanksgiving. God, let us give you the best time of our day, God. Let us not offer you, dear God, something, dear God, that is just, that's just not our best, God. Let us always bring to you our best, God, our best time, Lord, our best substance, oh God. Let us bring it to you, God, because you have been so good to us, and you have only brought us your best, God. You have only brought us what is good, oh God. And Father, we thank you for it, oh God. Thank you for fighting for us, God. Thank you that when the enemy pursues, dear God, that you continue to protect us, God. You continue to shower us, oh God, with blessings and favor, God. That no weapon can form, that form can prosper against us, oh God. And God, we thank you for it, oh God. 
in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. God, we thank you, God, for reviving us on tonight, God, that we will pray for our brothers and sisters and our cousins and our relatives, God, those who are lost, oh God. We will call their name out there, God, and you will save them, oh God. God, when we call their name, save them, God. When we call their name, deliver them, God. In the name of Jesus, dear God, change and turn their hearts, oh God, like you changed and turned our hearts towards you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Jesus. you, oh, mighty God, wonderful God, glorious God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving them, God. Thank you for saving them, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you're sick and in need of prayer, amen. If you're sick in your body and would like to pray for you, amen. I'd like to heal you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is still healing and delivering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll do it. I don't care how long you've been sick. I don't care how long you've been battling something. Amen. You can just believe God right now and God will do it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. He'll do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 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 Oh, she may be sick, but oh, my dear, say, Kim. Your mother, the least, and more, the key for the Rosa, my dear, the least Ya madre que por un saludo y por un saludo y se dirige a Madrid Seri. Ya madre que por un saludo y por un saludo y se dirige a Madrid Seri. Ya madre que por un saludo y por un saludo y se dirige a Madrid Seri. Ya madre que por un saludo y se dirige a Yen ale deke oro ko mari ni si oro sa mari deke deke matoro sa te ko mari si yen oro ko mari ese ke na di oro ko ma mari e sa oro ko mari si yen ale de sa ma oro ko mari ni si yen ale de oro ko se ni si yen ka na de se ma te ni se te ke na oro ko sa ni si yen ma oro sa to ko mari ni se ni Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. All the people of God are blessed and favored by God's hands are upon you. Surrender your will unto Him that He may lead you in every way, that He may direct your path. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to worry about. The Lord is with you. He said he will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Surrender your will unto the Lord. Your eyes will be open. And you will be able to see his glory. You will be able to see his presence. You will be able to see the light that leads you and guides you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
But to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift your hand and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it like you mean it. Whenever we say this, we're not just saying it because I'm saying it. We're proclaiming it over our lives. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Highly favored. Every need. Every need. In my life. In my life. Is met. Is met. According. According. To his riches. To his riches. And glory. And glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For blessing me. Blessing me. Keeping me. Keeping me. Watching over me. Watching over me. Over my family. Over my family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That every need. That every need. Financial need. Financial need. That I have. That I have. Receive it. I receive from it from you, Lord. From you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the health of my body. For the health of my body. I'm healed, Lord. I'm healed, Lord. From the top of my head. From the top of my head. To the sole of my feet. To the sole of my feet. No cancer. No cancer. No sickness. No sickness. No disease. No disease. In my body. In my body. My children's body. My children's body. Grandchildren's body. My loved ones' body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That when I touch. I'm healed. I'm healed. When I touch you, I touch you. In, my words, in my words, I'm healed. I'm healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now go touch somebody real quick and say, be healed in Jesus' name. Be made whole in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Receive in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We, we're going to receive our offering, and um, let's let's receive our offering. Then Adrian's going to come. He's got a brief testimony, and he's going to give us our benediction. Amen. Amen. And we happy about how God is blessing and growing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy about this. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen for Brother Amen. God. Um, I want to share a testimony with you guys um, based on what Pastor was talking about. You know, when you're about God's business, he'll most certainly open doors for you. Yeah. And, man, I, I've been so humble about a lot of things. And I was talking to Pastor the other day. You know, when you're seeking God, it's like an ache into your bones. Like, you, you really want him and everything. And when you're focused on him, you may try to set the things to the side, but what's for you is for you. And as you guys know, I have my own security company and everything like that. And I've been putting things off because I want to focus on God before I focus on anything else. But God is so faithful that he was telling me just to be patient in all that I do. Well, I just want to share something with you guys that it just blew my mind. Well, I have an advertisement that's on satellite radio now. And um, it was all unexpected. I was not thinking about doing it. It just fell into my hands. And the price was like nothing but love from God. Um, and I will have the broadcast on the radio for from now to September. Every from Saturday to Sunday. And I have a clip that I just want you guys to listen to. And it's a number for you guys to also call just as well. But it just shows you that when you when you're focused on God and all that you do, I tell you what, the path is so easy for us. And all we have to do is just trust God and just walk in. So here's a little clipping that um, it just hopefully will bless someone. Security service to the broadcast. That's where Adrian D. Hopkins is the chief executive officer. 
And of course, we're going to struggle with him next Saturday just to see what that company is all about. Adrian D. Hopkins, Chief Executive Officer of Hopkins Security Service. You call him up right now. And there we go. 318 telephone number 423 4998. That's every number. 423 4998. Hopkins Security Service here on KM Radio. So I just want to say that. Um, like I said, when you, when you truly focus on God and, and when you're not playing with it, and when you're like have nothing but desires but just to do what He wants you to do, when you want to be that vessel, I tell you what, he, he will move any mountain, he will move anything out your way. All you have to do is just trust God. Amen. So I just want to share the testimony with you guys. Amen. 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 Father God, we come before you right now in Jesus' name. First off, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're doing, O oh Lord God. Father God, as we hear the words, Father God, not only let us just be hearers, but Father, let us be doers of your word, Father God. Thank you for the word that we receive tonight, Father God. And Father, keep the word within our, in our hearts, Father God, and be the light on our feet, Father God. So Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, Father God, we ask that you will watch over us in every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.